a little bit of time travel in this movie. A little bit of uh, having to save the future by going back in time to save the future. Back to the future. <laughs> Hey guys, this is my review for Deadpool 2, the sequel to one of the, definitely one of the funnier superhero movies I've seen in a long time. That first one really surprised me. It was very simple in its terms of how it was uh, as a as a superhero movie. It actually wasn't that big and bombastic. It had a much cheaper budget than most films of its category. Even so, there is that scene at the end where he leaves all the guns in the va in the uh, taxi that drives away. It's because they didn't have enough money to shoot that climax, so they had to change it around. This one, they had the opportunity to make more, and that's what Tim Miller, the original director of the first one, wanted. However, Ryan Reynolds and the production crew really wanted to kind of keep it close to what it was, not really turn it into this big, bombastic, epic sort of story, but keep it very simple. And in fact, really, I would say it's meets in the middle. There is that scene with the convoy, which is pretty intense, but in terms of hell, even how its finale ends, it's actually not that big in terms of an epic scale. It's a very simple sort of action, and that's the thing with this film is, while it does give the good illusion of upping the ante, it still say, stays true to its simple intentions. While we get David, uh, director David Leach, I believe his name is, the director of John Wick, the action is well-rounded. It's not as intense as John Wick, for sure. The, the fluid momentum from those fight scenes does not pass over into this one. The goofiness of the first Deadpool does thankfully, but in terms of just that really whoa, whoa, whoa thing that happened in the first one, eh, the first two John Wick films, it's not really here, but it's close. And I'll admit, I actually thought this film was funny, almost as funny as the first one. I still think the first one is funnier, but the jokes in this one are really great. There's some really good jokes. The whole X-Force team, that was hilarious. That's probably the funniest moment in the entire film after they jump out of the helicopter and you'll understand why. Otherwise, this film actually doesn't really have a villain. It makes almost a, more of an issue than the first one did. The antagonist is, in a sense, the little boy, Russell, from uh, Hunter for the Wilder People, and apparently the actions that happen here reflect on Cable's future, because that's why Cable's come back in time to kill him. And they even make jokes about why he's there at that specific time, which is lazy writing. And I actually thought that the dynamic between Ryan Reynolds and Cable was pretty good. It wasn't the best. It wasn't like the be all end all that I thought it would be, but it was still pretty good. Uh, the Domino character, she's fantastic. I thought she was great. She was definitely one of the, the, more in, the more compelling aspects of the film. And of course, Brian Reynolds killed it as Deadpool. Obviously, he killed it. There's so many jokes, you just keep on thinking that they're not going to take it that much farther, and they do, and there's just like, wow, I can't believe they just did that. Something involving legs. I actually really enjoyed Deadpool 2. In terms of its villain aspect, though, like I said, there is the kid. It's more of a kind of um, a changing of moral sort of story. It's sort of like Days of Futures Past, but the real villain, the person who causes Russell's issue, like, it, it's not, I don't know, I find that that part was a little weak, but aside from that, the film's pretty solid. I still think it's definitely one of the better Marvel films because of what it is. It does rely off that meta nature. I think if it didn't have that meta quality to it, it would not be as good or as funny, but because it's using that, it does get a bonus point in terms of that. And again, I very much enjoyed it. I was dying in the movie theater. Of course, and this is after I see some parents bring their freaking what looks like a seven-year-old in the theater. At first, I was like, okay, you know what? People got to do that back in the 80s and the 90s. They had their kids be brought into R-rated movies just as long as the little fucker doesn't talk. And the bastard started talking. Like, just not whisper, just nyah, 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 for the first five minutes until the point I just went, SHUT UP! If you can sneak your kid into an R-rated film, that's fine. But you gotta make him shut the fuck up. That's the number one rule of movie theaters. It's shutting up. I don't know how kids don't seem to know this rule. Our parents don't enforce it. They're just like, oh, I don't think anyone will care. They only paid money to come see this movie. I'm gonna give Deadpool 2 
a 6 out of 7. So, pretty much a tie with the first one. Anyways, guys, I hope you liked this review. If you did, leave a like. If you're interested in more, maybe subscribe. Otherwise, that's all from me. I'll see you guys next time.